Hello and welcome to Learning AutoCAD 2013 tutorial number 8. Today, like in our previous tutorial, we will approach some commands known as modifiers, like array, rotate, and stretch. These tutorials are being produced by EasyCAD for you, and remember that you're more than welcome to share it if you like it. Let's go to the first one, which is the command array. Command array is used to create a pattern of objects, and then you can modify it. Let's access it here at the Home tab of the Ribbon Modifying panel, and the Array icon is right here next to Scale. Notice the arrow indicating the drop-down menu, so let's pull the menu and see that we have three options, Rectangular, Path, and Polar. Let's click on Rectangular, and this type of array will create a pattern of rows and columns. Now, notice that the first prompt is Select Objects. You can use a single object or a set of objects at the same time to array. So let's, uh, in my case, we'll use this computer station here. And now notice that once you hit enter, it should generate the default rectangular array, or at least the last settings you use in your computer or in your software. In my case, it will generate a four columns and three rows array of computer stations. But look up here at the ribbon and notice that automatically it opens up a new tab called Array Creation. And basically this will remain open until you finish working with the Array command. Also, you can select the array once it's created, like in this case. And once you select it, it will open up again so you can work or modify the array. Now, as you can see, this tab will give you six panels. The first one is the type, which refers to polar path, or in this case, rectangular. And you cannot modify this one. The next one is columns. And here you control the array settings for the columns in your pattern. The next one is rows, and you see the same settings, but only applying to raw specifications. Now the next one, Levels, is only used for 3D, so we won't be using it here. I won't be explaining anything about it. The following is the Properties panel, and here you can modify certain characteristics of the entire array itself. An important element of this is the associative property of your array, which for simplicity now means that any changes affecting one of your objects will be applied to all of the objects in the array. So for now, let's keep this checked, although you can create also non-associative arrays, but that's for later. And the final is the close panel that you can use once you're done changing uh, your array or modifying it. So once you hit this, it closes itself. Or also it closes once you uh, close the command. And in this case, of course, you hit enter. So let's play a little bit with these numbers so you can see how it can be manipulated. And of course, once you use this command, you should have a clear idea of the distances in between rows and columns. Now let's modify here the distance in between columns to 6 feet. And now let's change the amount of columns to 8 and see the results. This is the outcome. You see how it's uh, automatically modified. Additionally, you can modify several other options, and all you need to do is try it on your own. With more time, please go ahead and try some of these options until you feel comfortable enough with this command. Now let's move to the next option. Let's repeat the command array, but select the polar option. And this refers to an array in a circular pattern. Again, the first promise select objects. So let's select this chair. But see that the second promise specifies center point of array. And let's say that I want to create a set of uh, six chairs to be organized around this round table. So I'm using the center of the table as my center point. Now is when the array creation tab, once you select it, is when the array creation tab appears. And notice that the panels are similar and so far self-explanatory so than the ones used in the rectangular option. An interesting detail is that when CAD creates the polar array, it will rotate the objects by default. 
But if you don't want it that way, all you need to do is toggle the rotate items button here in the properties panel and see how it changes. See the difference. Also, you don't need to fill the, the whole circle. So let's say that you only want to fill 270 degrees out of the 360 of the circle. And here at the items panel, change the values of the fill button to 270. And see that it only fills that amount. Now, if you want to change the direction of the fill, go to properties panel again and toggle the direction button to see the difference. So you have a lot of choices, multiple options here to modify your array. And last but not least, uh, when we call again array, we have the path option. So let's go and look for the path option. Let's click on it and see that the prompt, the initial prompt says select objects. So in this case, I'm using this palm tree and then it's gonna request select path curve. Let's select the path and notice that once you do it, it will give you the default option or last settings you use. So now all you need to do is modify your array in terms of amount of items or distance. Let's modify some uh, elements here. And you see that you can modify the distance between them or any other thing you want to adjust or modify. Again, here, there is a lot that you need to work with. You need to work on your own. So I think that it's important for you to go ahead and play a little bit with this. Now, moving on to the next command, the command rotate. Uh, rotate is fairly easy to use. So let's call the command here at the ribbon. Let's click on the icon. And once you have it, uh, the first promise, select the objects. So let's use this one. And after selecting, the second prompt is specify base point. And I'm assuming you're already familiar with this concept from our previous tutorials. We just use it. The base point should be the most convenient for your operation. So in this case, I'll select this uh, bottom corner here. If you have orth ortho mode active, and you can use FA for this, while moving your crosshair, you'll see a preview of your possible options at square angles. Or you can also use F10 for polar tracking. And mine is set to 15 degrees. So I'll have this option in increments of 15. You see the green uh, lines. So if you don't have any other drawing aid active, you can rotate freely. And you will have a preview of your operation, of your possible uh, rotation. Uh, once you click for the second time, it will conclude the... Uh, command and at the same time you will have there your rotation but we agree on the fact that this is not very precise so basically you can also use numerical entry so I'll use here I'll call the command again and instead of uh, do a direct entry on the screen I'll use a minus 45 and once you hit enter, it will rotate 45 degrees clockwise. So just make sure to click for the second time to close the command and execute the operation. So you see that uh, using the rotate command is fairly easy. Now going to the third command, command stretch. Stretch is very useful to correct certain operations. So, however, this commands, and this is very important, moves only the vertices and endpoints that lie inside the crossing selection. So, in other words, anything you enclosed will be moved and anything partially touched will be stretched. Let's use this piece here and you can see how it works. I will modify this in length. So let's call the command here in the ribbon. And the first prompt is select objects to stretch. And as you can see, I will select this set of objects. Some are partially touched and others are gonna be completely enclosed. Now, once I click, see that you have a preview of the stretch operation and you can randomly move your crosshair and use any point. And once you click for the second time, it will be fine. But you will agree with me that this is not very accurate. So most likely you will have a specific distance to correct the object. So let's undo the movement and redo it with a specific distance. Let's call the command again notice that once you call it and select again the set of objects 
you can use the distance option here at the bottom. So let's select it. In my case, I'll use six inches positive in the X or to the right and zero for the Y coordinate. And once you click enter, then it modified the object to the new specifications you needed. So you can see how it changed the object. And well, friends, this basically concludes our today's tutorial. I really hope you're benefiting from it. Feel free to comment on it. And now remember, if you want to learn more, you can subscribe to my channel and feel free to share this video if you like it. For our next tutorial, we'll be discussing three other commands, which are command trim, extend, and scale. Again, thanks for watching, and see you next time.